Right. We are recording now, I believe. So welcome everyone. My name is Kat Hutchings. I have been selling on Etsy for over a decade, almost 12 years now. I have two shops. I run a jewelry supply shop as well as a handmade jewelry shop and collectively have done many much sales. I think I'm almost at like over a hundred thousand between the two shops now. I do this full time and I love to share with other Etsy sellers how you can grow your sales. But not only that, like while sales is important to me, I think one of the reasons I wanted to do this video today was because I want other Etsy sellers to not be frazzled during the holidays. The holidays are such a special time. So yes, we want to crank it. We want to make as much money as we possibly can. It's very fun, very exciting, but also to do everything that you can now to prepare yourself and your shop to make sure that you can have also a very enjoyable, personal, peaceful holiday season and make a lot of money along the way. So just a few housekeeping things. I have put on the Q&A for those of you that are here live. If you have a question, I try to check the chat kind of as I'm doing my presentation. Not always great at it. I love your participation. You guys can talk to each other, answer questions. But if there is a question you would like to make sure that I see and don't miss, feel free to go to the Q&A section. And let me just double check. I think I turned that on. Okay, yes, so I've already got a question. I'm gonna save that for the end, but you can, thank you. Who was that that put that in there? It looks like Isabella has dropped a question in there. Feel free to drop your questions there. And then after the presentation, I'm gonna go through and answer all of those. Okay, you are so welcome, Claire. She says, thank you for sharing your knowledge. All right, so, Let's go ahead. I'm just going to jump in because like I said, I know everyone's time is super valuable. So the first piece of advice that I give when thinking of like holiday prepping your shop is to prep inventory. So that might seem a little self-explanatory, but I just want to make sure you don't miss these pieces because honestly, after 12 holiday seasons on Etsy, I have literally had insane nightmarish holidays and holidays that were such a beautiful breeze some sales, everything was organized and ready to go. This is a piece that I have overlooked before and it has absolutely bit me in my little tush and made things miserable, especially like I remember one year we ran out of bubble mailers and there were they were sold out like everywhere and it was such a nightmare. So one of the things that you can do is make sure that you have enough stock such as like materials to make your items, but also make sure that you have enough for packaging. So think of everything that goes into your packaging, enough envelopes, enough labels, enough bubble wrap. So I know that can seem hard and overwhelming, especially if you're a new seller and you've never done a holiday season before. It honestly, sometimes it is just like a shot in the dark and you might have a year where you run out of stuff, you're not quite as prepared or maybe you way over buy and that's always kind of like a bummer on budgets and everything like that. I mean, my best, oh gosh, if I had to give a piece of advice to like a new seller, I would say to maybe five times what you normally do. So like, let's say throughout a week, let's say on a normal week, you sell like 10 items. I would maybe plan to sell 50 items a week in November and December. But again, that's just such a rough ballpark estimate. At least it gives you something. I would always rather over plan than under plan, especially for something like stocking inventory, because with your materials and your packaging, those are items that you will be able to use. Again, depending on industry, unless they're like perishable or something like that, for the most part, even though it may be a big chunk of change up front at least you won't have to worry about that kind of moving into the holidays and selling out and running out of that kind of stuff. In that same vein of the prepping inventory, something that I always recommend you do if possible is to do what I call, we call them pre-made. So for my supply shop, I don't need to worry about that. All of my stuff is already ready to go. You order the earring hooks. I ship the earring hooks. That's how it, you know, there's nothing fancy about it. My handmade jewelry shop, however, we try to pre-make as many items as possible. So especially like we don't do it for everything in our top selling items and not every single one of my items can be pre-made. So trust me, I totally understand that, especially selling on Etsy. If you do a lot of customized stuff, maybe even one of kind stuff that will never be possible. But for me in my industry, there are some items that 
like aren't customizable in the sense of like, okay, if I make this one type of earring and it has four different color options, I can pre-make those so they're ready to go during the holidays and then we can just take them and ship them. Some of the other stuff though, if it has, you know, if it's custom like names or, you know, just different combinations of colors or birthstones or things like that, we can't always pre-make those. But even then, like sometimes we will pre-make like our top selling items as much as we can. So maybe I have a necklace and the pendant piece is so customizable. I can't pre-make that, but I can put the necklace clasp and toggle together beforehand you know again i get i will in my presentations i always get stuck in like jewelry world because that's where i live and breathe but i'm trying to think whatever you're selling whether it's like soap or anything like that like is there a piece of that that you can try to pre-make and get ready to go beforehand um so yeah that's last year i think we did 2500 orders in november and december between my two shops so you can imagine if we didn't have enough inventory, like that can get really stressful. So whatever level you're at, wherever you are in your SC journey, I feel like you can always take value and just don't underestimate the importance of trying to, especially with all the supply chain issues that we've had over the years, just make sure you have as much of that stuff ready to go. Even, you know, if it's your gift wrap, your bubble wrap, whatever it is. All right, so next piece of advice that I wanna share with you guys. Sorry, I've got my notes here. I'll try to bring them over more so I feel like I'm not, it's fine looking over so much. Ugh. Okay, next thing I wanna recommend that you guys do, and this is gonna be an interesting one, same principle. It's not gonna to apply to everyone in every situation, but this is definitely a piece of advice I wish I had known going into Etsy holidays years ago because I missed out on a lot of sales just from a lack of knowledge in this space. So I recommend start, if you run Etsy ads, you want to start running them now to prep for the holidays. So let me, before we go in, so I'm gonna go and explain Etsy ads because I totally understand they do not work for every business. My supply shop business, I do not run Etsy ads for because as of today again i think i'm going to go back this holiday and see if i can tweak some things and figure some stuff out i've updated some just quantities and pricing and things like that but um it's at such a low price point that it's always been really hard for me to make what i call it's called like an roi or a return on investment so that kind of means like for every dollar that i'm spending on etsy ads I'm making this much more. I'm making $2. I'm making $5. I'm making $10. That's like kind of like your return on investment. So if you spend a dollar, you make 10. If you spend a dollar, you make two. However, whatever percentage that is, that's kind of what you gauge that off of. So I don't do it for my supply shop. Etsy ads do not work for every shop. Maybe you've tried them. Maybe they haven't worked. But I do want to encourage you. I think it's worth trying around the holiday seasons because that for my jewelry shop, the Etsy ads do exceptionally well. I get a ton of traffic as well as have a really good return on investment. So during the holiday time, I'm trying to get for every dollar I'm spending, I'm making $4 in Etsy ads. So if I spend $10 that day, that means I made like $40 from the sale. So again, maybe that depending on the type of items you're selling, what your industry and maybe that isn't even a good enough return on your investment or maybe it is so you get to kind of decide what those numbers would look like but the reason i recommend starting them so early is because what will happen is that gives you time to tweak your etsy ads so what i like to do to start off is i like to turn on every single item in my shop you just toggle it on 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 um you know what for those of you because some of you are so new i'm gonna go ahead and i think i'm gonna try to share my screen with you here and i'm going to show you i'll just do let's try window i'll just do my entire screen with you all right i'm gonna share my screen with you and you can see i'm gonna walk you through the etsy ad so this is my supply shop here you can see i do not have the ads turned on but i at least want to show you guys where and how you can do this and how you can find this okay so you're going to come over here to your stats the first thing that you're going to do is you want to set a kind of like daily budget well not stats that's embarrassing sorry marketing etsy ads <laughs> don't go to your stats i 
<laughs> I promise I know what I'm talking about. All right, so this is where you're going to start and set your budget. So what Etsy is asking you here is how much do you want to spend? What is the maximum you want to spend every day? So I'm just gonna start and let's say, okay, we're gonna do $5 and we're gonna say, start your campaign. So Etsy ads are now running. So Etsy is going to look at all the items in my shop and they're gonna be showing them to people. You only, you only pay if someone actually clicks on that item. So the other neat thing is Etsy, as you have these ads running, they're going to show you if after someone clicked on the item, if they actually purchased the item. So I wish I had Etsy ads running because you can't see that information because I haven't been running my ads for my supply shop. Let's see, even if we go here. So, okay. So here, yes, this is perfect. So go back here just so you can see what I did. So you go to your Etsy ads, you set your budget, and then you go to manage advertised listings. Okay. Then what you're going to do is you're going to make sure you have here, you're going to say, show me all advertised listings. So at this time, that should be every item in my shop. Etsy has went ahead and you can see here, I have like over 500 items in my shop, um, they should all be advertised right now. So over time, you're gonna see here some of this stuff. What this means is it's gonna say how many people viewed this item, how many people clicked on them, some percentages, how many orders resulted from those clicks. And then right here, this ROAS, this is where Etsy's gonna show you if that ad is actually making money. And I mean, it's just here's where they're doing the math for you, but you can actually compare your revenue and your spend right here on the screen. So let's, for example, let's say that this revenue here said $10. So let's say I made $10 off of this ad that people have clicked on and I spent, let's say $2. So that you can see that return is like what I call a five times return or five X. So it's like, for this, you know, I spent $2 and I made $10. And so then it'll tell you kind of like what that ROAS is over here. So as time goes on, what I do is I turn off any of the ads that have a low ORAS. So for example, if this is a one ROAS, that means you spent a dollar and you made a dollar. So over here it would say, hey, you spent a dollar for this ad and you made $1. So someone bought it and let's say the item cost a dollar. So my ROAS would be one. So this is where, again, the two times, the three times, if this is a two, that means for every dollar you made two, hopefully you guys kind of get the gist and understand what I'm talking about. So if something is low here, like if that drops below like a two, I say, you know what, that's not worth advertising. And I just say, yes, turn that off. And I toggle it off there. And so over time, I'm slowly kind of like realizing what is happening with my ads and I'm turning off those ads. Oh shoot. I'm going to hold on. I'm going to share one more time. Cause I want you guys to be able to see this other piece. So on top of that, what you also want to be doing though, is you want to be going into these search terms here. When you click on this search term, it's going to show you keywords down here in this section, and it's going to tell you how many views you got off of that keyword. So then based on those keywords, what I do is I, you can turn off specific keywords for that listing. So I know like, for example, I have like a butterfly necklace in one of my, in my jewelry shop. I just was going through and looking at those keywords for that listing. And one of the keywords that said that people were clicking on was the keyword butterfly. I chose to turn that keyword off because for me, I feel like that is too generic of a keyword and someone looking for butterfly doesn't necessarily want a butterfly necklace. So I only kept the keywords on such as butterfly necklace, insect necklace, butterfly jewelry, something that's a little more specific because I feel like the it's called like a long tail keyword. The chances of someone actually making that purchase are going to be higher for a more targeted keyword. So that's something else you can do with your ads. So start them now. It's going to give you time to go through, turn off the ads that aren't performing, as well as tweak those keywords that you're actually wanting Etsy to show that ad for that keyword for that item. That's a new feature. They added that back. I think I want to say it was maybe like six months ago ish for a long time. They didn't let us do anything with the keywords. So I think that's a really nice feature. And again, kind of like up level your Etsy shop if you understand it and can kind of like utilize that 
in your shop. So feel free. I know Etsy ads can be a little strange. I still don't feel like, even though I've been doing them for years, trying to figure it out, I don't feel like I'm a complete master expert at them, but feel free in that Q and a section to go ahead and um, leave your questions. Cause again, I don't do great at checking my chats as I'm going through here, but if you drop it in the Q and a, I'll be sure at the end to be able to answer all of those questions. Um, someone here, Isabella says Etsy ads at $1 has, a day has been a game changer. I totally see results. Is there a trick to choosing good keywords? So I just said, I kind of went over that Elizabeth, uh, Isabella, thank you for that question. It's just, I look at the item and I try to make sure the keywords, I try to think like a buyer and I'm like, okay, if I was a buyer and I was searching for this keyword, do I really think that this keyword matches and describes what this item is? And those are the keywords that I try to keep. Again, just like that example of the butterfly is just a generic keyword. I shut that one off. Who knows? Like maybe that would still, someone looking for a butterfly would see the necklace and still want it. But I try to get it a little more specified if that makes sense. Okay, so tip number one, just to recap, is prepping your inventory. Tick Tip number two is to start running your ads now. If you decide that that's going to be a piece that will help you during the holidays, I see really good results for my jewelry shop using Etsy ads. So I always recommend, especially if you can start now and start to understand them. And actually I go into my Etsy ads and I am checking them almost like every other day and turning ads off, turning ads back on, trying different things, taking out keywords. Because during the holidays, when there's so many people coming to Etsy, like you want to capitalize on that traffic as much as you can. And Etsy can be a great, Etsy ads can be, not always in all instances, but can be a great option for that. Um, how do you see which keywords are used by buyers? Is it in the search term section of stats? So yeah, so sorry, really quick, I'll share my screen and then we'll move on to my next one here. Again, if you have other questions, drop them in the chat and I'll be sure to come back to them. But, um, oops, nope, that's not what I want. Hold on, stop sharing. That's my calendar, super awkward. <laughs> share screen and I will just share my entire screen. There we go, okay. So back here to the Etsy ads, it's gonna be right, I wish I had my ads turned on for my supply shop so you could see it, um, but it's gonna be right here. You go to Etsy ads, so you go to your main page here and then you're going to click right here where it says search terms. And if you are running your ads for long enough, usually like it says here, not enough data, you have gotta wait, see here it says in the last seven days. So you gotta give it some time. Um, but those keywords are going to be right down here and then you'll just have a way to toggle them on or off for the ad. So hopefully that was helpful a little bit, just explaining Etsy ads. And again, I can come back to that at the end. If you guys have more like generic questions, just make sure you drop them in that Q and a point on the chat feature. All right. So we've done prepping our inventory, running our Etsy ads. The third piece of holiday prep advice I like to give is around, um, a really fun, creative outlet and that's holiday branding. So I recommend putting holiday branding everywhere you can. Just kidding, to whatever you know level makes sense for your shop. Some of the examples I like to give for people are in your shop banner. We always love to have holiday themed banners, especially like if you do, I think, what do they call it? Is it the Etsy plus membership? I think you pay like $10 extra a month and it lets you have the um, scrolling banners starting off for a smaller shop. I don't wreck it. Like you don't have to spend that extra $10 for shops that, you know, are very established. You're making kind of like those consistent sales. I do think it's a fun way to get more branding in your shop. But either way, whether you just have a single banner for the holidays, it is fun to add some of those elements. Um, I love to use Canva. If you guys haven't used or heard of Canva before, it's C-A-N-V-A dot com. They have an option that's free that's great. I have their um, paid subscription just because I like to plug in my branding colors and fonts and all of that. But go to Canva. You can design an Etsy banner, put photos of your shop in there, put some fun holiday elements, whatever, you know, that looks like for you and your industry. Um, but that can be a really great way to get people in that holiday buying mindset when they come to your shop. Um, another place that I will show you guys here, because this is one that a lot of sellers don't know about, especially if you're new, it's kind of tucked away a little, a little hidden gem, but I will share my screen with you again and show you 
where to go to do this. So you go to your settings and then go to options. Okay. And you're going to see here, you can scroll down and it says offer gift wrapping. Okay. So I have this enabled and then what you can do on top of that. So you write how much you charge. So we charge $4 for gift wrapping. And then you just describe in a little tiny detail what that gift wrapping will look like. On top of that, though, this is the piece that I think is really fun is you can add a picture of your holiday branding. So I know this is, I mean, your holiday gift wrapping options. It's a little small probably here on your screen, but you can load the photo right here. And then people, when they're going to, when they select that option, they will actually be able to see a tiny little picture of the packaging and of that gift wrapping and what that will look like so it's like etsy will tell them hey this seller offers gift wrapping for an extra four dollars and this is what it's going to look like it's like a little pop-up window so people can instantly see hey if i'm shipping this gift awesome i know it's going to look beautiful when it arrives it's going to be all done and sometimes i really recommend for etsy sellers to offer this even if you do it almost for like just an extra dollar even if it's not anything super fancy or time consuming when people are shopping on etsy they will sometimes filter items like let's say i was shopping for i'll do soap again i love handmade delicious smelling soap so let's say i am looking for some galaxy soap for my mom for the holidays that would be for myself i would love galaxy soap <laughs> I'm shopping for myself. So I type in Galaxy Soap and then I know I'm sending it to my mom. So I want it to be able to be gift wrapped. I will go to those filters and I will tell Etsy, I know there's going to be thousands of Galaxy Soaps out there. I only want you to show me the ones that have gift wrapping options. So I will click a little box and guess what? If you offer Galaxy Soap and you do not offer gift wrapping, Etsy is not even going to show me your items. So that is, again, just up leveling your shop. That is a great way that you can get your items in front of thousands more buyers just by doing something as simple as offering gift wrapping. Doesn't have to be crazy fancy. Everyone loves cute gift wrapping. If that's an option, try to make it cute. You know, something that you would love to see under your tree, because those are the people, a lot of people who come to Etsy are looking for special things like that, like really special, meaningful gifts that you can't just get at big, you know, box stores. All right. Another vote here, just looking at the chat, uh, chat here for the Canva is amazing. You can make designs with that. Yes. Thank you, Brenda. What is your uh, offer free gift bags? I am not sure, Atara, what you are referencing there. Um, let me know if you have a question about that. You can put it in the Q&A and I will try to for sure get to that at the end. Okay, let's see. So another way that you can do holiday branding besides the banner and then the gift wrap option is you can put holiday theming in your photos. So what I like to recommend to do it, depending on how many items you have, how big your shop is really, if you're don't want to get too overwhelmed with it, just pick some of your top selling items and take a special holiday theme photo. And especially if it's an item that, you know, people get a lot during the holidays to give as gift to give as gifts. If you can add some kind of just little holiday, something, maybe it's a little extra snow, maybe it's some little snowflakes, maybe it's some pine cones or some pine trees or like a, you know, gingerbread house in the background, like whatever it is, whatever you're selling, that can be really great, especially for Etsy when they are looking for stuff to put in their emails. It's going to, when people are searching, like if they're searching for, you know, um, gosh, again, what's something that you would search for on Etsy? My mind is like, drawing a blank. I'm thinking of stuff that I bought before lip gloss. I know I'm going to bath and body a lot. I apparently I buy a lot of bath and body things. on Etsy. <laughs> so I was looking for some lip scrubs for my lips. So when I search for like lip scrubs, as I'm looking at all of these photos, if I see something that looks really holiday and festive and I'm like, oh, I want to put that in a stocking that can automatically make me want to click on that item a little bit more during that holiday time period. So just again, a fun way to get seen, to get featured, to bring that buyer mentality. When people come to the shop, they're, they're subconsciously almost like imagining themselves owning this product during the holiday times. Um, all right. The final thing I will say in regards to holiday branding, 
not really branding, but I went ahead and put it in this section kind of in its own funny little way is just to think through what kind of sales you will be offering and if you will be offering any sales at all. So again, you know, you don't have to do that for your shop. It is something that I have found works really well for my businesses on Etsy and something that I like to do. I like to make sure my prices are set to a point where I'm able to offer that to people. Definitely don't have to. Um, but for me, if I'm going to offer a sale, I want to make sure that it's trying to encourage buyers. For example, like maybe I do like if you spend $30, then you get 10% off. If you spend $50, you get 15% off. Whatever that looks like, it's trying to like encourage additional sales revenue, helping just like incentive to the shopper like hey i see you i read like i'm grateful for you if you spend this in my shop i'm happy to offer you this discount um so i like to make sure that they're kind of like adding something to my shop as well as i like to make sure that people actually know about them and they're advertised and seen so i, I like to put them sometimes in my shop banner and also in my announcements um that way it just again lets people know like hey i'm running this sale here's a little more information about that so sales are something I like to include in the holiday branding section. All right, so we've got prepping inventory, start running your ads, do your holiday branding. The fourth thing I wanna talk about tonight is workflows. Okay, what does that mean? So when you think about your orders, how are they being filled? So if you don't have a crazy amount of orders, it's probably pretty manageable, pretty doable. You know, the orders come in, you fill them. But just to think through, like, what does that process, do I have a set process in place, not only for my customer's benefit, but for my sanity and benefit as well? So when those orders come in, do I fill them immediately? Am I filling them at certain times of day? When am I responding to like customer messages? How is that all kind of built into my process? So I know for us as a larger shop, when we have so many orders coming in, we have actually broke it down. It, during the holidays, we have a separate packaging room and a separate like making room. So an order comes in, that item gets made, those labels get printed out, they get sent to the packaging room, and then we put each item on each label as we're kind of going through. We mark each label if it's a priority or an express, if it has gift wrap, just to make sure that whoever's in their packaging kind of gets all of those notes and things. So it's just thinking through beforehand, like, okay, let's just say if I were to get whatever amount of orders, like a, norm, a number I don't normally get, like let's say I get 20 orders that come in, what does my workflow look like? Like, how am I going to be filling those orders? Um, the second thing you want to think about, it may be a little early. I was a solopreneur in my Etsy shop. I want to say probably for the first, like, I want to say like five or so years, meaning I did everything. Orders came in, I shipped them, I filled them, I did the customer service. But holidays can sometimes be a great time to make your first hire, if not additional hires um, because it's really fun. You have an extra influx of orders. So usually it's easier to kind of like pay people to help with that. And you can then look through your task and decide, okay, what are the things that I maybe am not great at doing and don't love to do that I could find someone else who is like really great at that for, you know, is it someone to do help with my customer service, answering messages? Is it someone to help with packing and shipping orders, like printing out the labels, getting them all boxed and ready to go. Um, I'm trying to think of other specific things. Is there a certain item that is ordered over and over again that I could kind of like show someone or maybe they make like a piece of it or I'm actually teaching them like the whole thing. Again, for every industry, it's gonna be totally different, but that's definitely a great time to think about doing it is before we get into the really busy season, which at least for me, like I talked about at the very beginning of this presentation, if you guys missed it, my shop's kind of like my jewelry shop peaks right around December 15th. And so up like from end of November to December 15th, the whole November, it's kind of like ramping up, but that's when it really like is like at its height. And then it slowly kind of like starts trickling down. So again, does, doesn't mean that's like gonna be that way for every industry or every category, just something to keep in mind. If you're going to bring on higher like extra help, it might be nice to kind of bring those people on, do the training and stuff now. And maybe you even just tell them like, hey, I'm not sure I'll need you, but just in case I do, you're already trained and ready to go if it gets crazy. 
like I said, it's not going to be the case for everyone. I went years and years and years doing everything on my own. And that is totally awesome and fine. One of the beautiful things about selling on Etsy is you get to be your own boss and do everything your own way and not have to worry about it. <laughs> All right. So just keep that in mind. Tuck that away when you're thinking about how can I prep a little better for the holidays to have a nice, sane, peaceful holiday season. All right, workflows. I think the only other thing, oh, I will say this is the other thing I was gonna say about workflows is I like to use a program called Asana. Um, we use their free version. I've almost got their paid version before because there's a few other features, but it's super cool. And I will even, I'm gonna share my screen with you here and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. I've got it pulled up here. So you can see here, hopefully Tessa won't mind, but this is one of my assistants. You can see some of her like, task that she has coming up. So the cool thing I like about Asana is it lets you repeat tasks. So some of her things she's doing every day, some of them she's doing once a week, but these are just some of the things kind of like coming up on her docket. So she's going to be changing our sales banner. She's going to double check our pre-made items, make sure everything's in stock, still getting ready to go for the holidays. She's rearranging the shop, putting our top selling items. Again, this is all kind of like nuance, not necessarily holiday prep, but I just want you to see and give an example example of a type of to-do list program where you can try to keep everything um, a little more manageable during the holidays. I didn't, I went years and years and years. It was actually on a personal note behind the scenes. So oh, when did it happen? I think it was 2020, 2019, right around there. We had never used Asana before. I didn't have any kind of like to-do list, team management stuff at all. Myself, I was very just unorganized. It was like, you do this and you do this. Oh, I changed my mind. Now do this, now do this. And my whole team was like, what is happening? So we had a holiday season that was like crazy. We had a ton of orders. We weren't really prepared for. Everyone was really kind of stressed and frazzled. After that holiday season, we all kind of survived, but my team, are they're so great. Love them, but they, they were literally like so we need to figure out a better way to do things because that was a little bit stressful. And I was like, okay. So I did some research and that's where I found Asana and it like changed my business. It let me automate things. Not like, how do I explain? It's like the things that you're doing every day, but you sometimes forget. It's like, it took everything that I was doing out of my head and kind of like put it in a nice, easy to read and follow format. And I could assign tasks to different people. Again, if you're a solopreneur, totally fine. You can assign yourself the task. Like every day I have reoccurring things. Like every day I know I need to check my emails. I do it. I check it off. Boom. It goes on my to-do list for the next day. Every day I know I need to, um, see, I can't even remember what all my everyday to-do lists are. And that's why I have a sauna because my memory is terrible. But every day they are popping up on my to-do list. So I know to do them and move on to kind of like the next thing. So task management, I mean, you don't have to use a sauna. I think there's other ones out there. Like I want to say Monday, I think trunk is maybe one. Trello, maybe it's a Trello. I might just be making up words. Look for just program management software. I We've really been happy with Asana. So I like to share that one with people as well. All right. Please spell Asana. You got it. That's that's how you spell it. I'm pretty sure. Actually, A-S-A-N-A. -A -A. Yeah, that's it. Oh, I will also, I will try really hard to remember all of these links. Maybe I'll even write that down. And in my YouTube replay, you can go to my Cat Hutchings channel. I will try to have those in the description in the footnotes so you can actually follow along that way to some of this stuff if i reference it thank you for those questions again just a reminder drop questions just in case so if i don't miss them in the chat at the end i'll come to this q a section and answer all those questions that you guys have regarding holiday prep okay i think that's all for workflows so people always say remember to breathe during your presentations <laughs> Fifth one we want to talk about is launching new holiday items. So this is a fun one. This is what can seem a little crazy if things get super busy, but it is one I try to do every year. I try to do a product launch at the beginning of January. So right now, the way I do my launches, I do four year winter, summer, spring, fall. I do about 15 to 20 items. And this is for my jewelry shop, for the supply shop. It's kind of similar, kind of follows that same um, model a little bit but when you're launching items at winter time it can just be so fun to give your current like people who are following you like something new and exciting to look at and think of for gifting like i mean think of some of your favorite brands or 
companies that you've bought from. And if they're like, hey, I have this new cool thing and it's right around holiday time, it's really fun as a shopper to get that information and see if there's a new item they have that you might want to gift to someone, gift to yourself. Um, but some of the things that I look for when I'm doing a holiday launch are I do keywords and I will drop in that um, YouTube channel video. I will put, I have some keyword tools that I really like to use to help me figure out what keywords are going to be best, like what a lot of people are looking for that maybe doesn't have as much competition that's on an upward trend, things like that. It's kind of its own little video and tutorial. So I'll put some of those links in there just so I don't forget keyword links. <laughs> but that's something I look for. I also, um, I'll put the link to the email program that I use because it's its own little journey as well. But I like to send emails to my customer legally. You can't, do not just email people that order from your shop. They need to subscribe to your email list. And there's a correct way to kind of do that and ask people if they would like to be on um, your email list. So I email them the new products. I look for good keywords. And most of all, it's sometimes for me, it's just like a nice creative break during the busy hustle and bustle of the holiday to come up with some new fun ideas, list them in my shop. It just feels really exciting and fun to do. So something I recommend. Um, also, little side note, Etsy has an amazing, what do they call it? It's like a, what is the name of it? Oh, Marketplace Insights. That's what it's called, where you can go and see what they're kind of predicting is going to be trending. So make sure you check that out. I love listening to their Etsy success podcast. They talk about the whole marketplace trends. I always love to listen to that. You can also find it in the Etsy seller handbook. But the thing I was just going over that before the presentation tonight and the thing I was reminded of that you want to keep in mind when you're doing your items and things is they break giftable items into three categories as far as value. So they are looking for items that are $30 or less, $50 or less, or, or $50. No, 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 no. Is it, it's $30 and under $50 and under. And then I think it's like a hundred dollars and above. Anyway, basically like there's those, they have these three benchmarks and I'm pretty sure if I remember right in years past on Etsy, they will have special categories and things for those type of gifts. And so it'll be like, hey, here's gifts under $30, click here, boom. And then it shows you kind of like all of those gifts and things. So that's just, again, little tweak, little like hint and trick that can make a difference. I will go through my items. And if there is something that's on the border, if I have an item and it's listed at $34, I will look really hard at that item and say, Ooh, I wonder if I could drop it down to $30 just to get included. Sometimes you can't, sometimes you got it. You have your margins, you got your price of goods, your time, you got, you know, like sometimes the price it is what it is, it's gotta be $34. But if there is a little room or maybe it's even like $32, I will try to hit it that $30 mark so I can get included in all of that. The same thing at the 50 mark or even the hundred mark. It's like, if I've got an item that's like, $54. I'm going to think, oh, maybe I'm, maybe I'll go ahead and just mark that down a little bit for the holidays to get included in their 50 and under type category emails and fines and all of that. So anyways, that's just another like little tidbit I have for you. So to recap, your five things are prepping your inventory, start running your ads, do your holiday branding, do your workflows and launch new holiday items. So those are my five tips and tricks. I have found that have really made a difference in my shop. I'm going to go ahead and pop over to the Q&A now and see if I can get some of those Q&As answered for you guys. And again, sorry, I'm not better at reading your chats as you guys are going through. Yes, it's Trello. Trello is awesome. Awesome. I, I love the conversations that you guys have while I'm doing this. Let me get to these Q&As though for you. Okay. Do you have any specific recommendations for higher price items, 50 plus, to boost sales during the holidays? Honestly, my specific recommendation for higher price items would be to lean even more into Etsy ads because, again, depending on your price margins, sometimes you can afford to have those clicks. You can get more clicks on an item to get that sale because it's like, Again, just to give the analogy, so my supply shop, I have some of my items are literally like $3. It's a bag of beads and it's $3. So if people click on that item, I don't know, let's say 10 times and no one buys it out of those 10 people and that 
cost me a dollar, that's already like a third of the price of my item. Like it's not long. If 30 clicks happen and no one bought that item, I just like, I've lost money because even if someone does buy it now, it's already cost me more than the price of the item. Whereas if you have a $50 item, if someone clicks, you know, you get 30 clicks and you spent $3, well, your 31st click, someone actually buys that much item, you're still most likely making money. Yeah, it costs you $4 to get someone to buy it, but you just, you kind of have more wiggle room there. So if you have higher price items, I definitely think trying Etsy ads is going to be worth a look for you as well as like same thing with the 30, 50, hundred dollar mark, trying to see if you can get items into those buckets can sometimes be helpful. All right. Says here, I'm a fairly new shop and I want to be found. Oops. Do you think, uh, Etsy ads. Oh, you know what? I'm going to start actually at the bottom because it seems like I thought I was anyways, I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. All right. Thank you. Aga. You're so well. Oops. Cancel. I don't want to do that. I want to, I wanted to mark it as red. Okay. Maybe I can't do that. Answer live. Okay, there we go. That got rid of it. All right. Does Etsy pick up items $30 and under, even if you don't have it tagged as a gift under $30? So again, I'm not 100% sure there, but I'm pretty sure you do. I am almost actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I am almost positive. You do not have to have the tag gift under 30 in your item for Etsy to put it in their gifts under 30. Etsy, I am almost positive, is just looking at all the, their algorithm is going through and it's saying, let's say it's like Etsy does an email promotion and says, hey, check out these, um, you know, all of these women's tops are under $50. So I'm pretty sure all they do is they type women's top into the search bar and then they filter all of the items that are under $50 and they show those into those emails or things like that. So I am almost positive you do not have to have that tag gift under 30. As long as your item is included in whatever category and it's at that price point, it should be included in any promotions that Etsy does. Great question, Lisa. Oh, I keep trying to do that. Sorry, I want to answer live. There we go. Okay, let's see. And you make a tag for the 30 and under. Yeah, you don't have to make a tag for the 30 and under. That's just if you price your item 30 and under. I'm almost positive that's... That's correct. <laughs> okay, let's see. How important do you feel adding videos are to your listing? Yes, so important. I was actually just talking to my team about this the other day. Um, I was looking, I was doing some shopping and looking at different items on Etsy and I was so drawn. I noticed subconsciously, I was so drawn to items that have videos. I don't know if you guys, maybe it's just a beta test that I'm in. Maybe this is how everyone's screens are. But um, when I'm scrolling and looking, if you hover over an item that has a video, that image will all of a sudden start to move and it will show you the video of that item. And that's just very eye catching, I feel like for a buyer. So I always, I did another live training and you can actually go back and watch the YouTube video. It was super good. It was on my top photography tips for Etsy. Etsy gave like this whole, they gave me this awesome slide deck for me to share with you guys, um, showing examples and things like that. But that is one of the things I talk about in that video is yes, I love videos being included in listings. If you can do it, if you can spare the time, I definitely think it's worth adding to your Etsy listings. Uh, yes, I'm a sucker for the videos. Absolutely. Wait, I feel like, I feel like I'm not going in the right direction again. I thought if I started at the bottom, okay, maybe, maybe we're good. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> Oh, wait, I, cause I'm, wait, am I, no, I'm still in the Q and A. Let me go back to the general. I see you. I'd love to hear what Kat has to say. Um, Printify just wanted to know if there's any particular advice. Oh, I don't know a whole lot about Printify, but sticking in the Q and A section, there's a, excuse me, there's a separate Q and A section that I'm kind of living in right now and answering these questions for you guys. <gasps> My screen froze. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Hopefully it's better now. Hopefully I hate technology when it doesn't work. How important do you feel adding videos are? Yes, super important. Got that one. Boom. I find it difficult to incentivize shoppers with the 10 to 15% off X amount of products as I have lower cost items and it's hard to make a decent incentive while still actually turning a profit. Any tips? Yeah, I'm the same way. That's exactly kind of like how my supply shop is. Some of those items are just like priced lower. And so it is really hard to offer, you know, those discounts still make those profits. I think it really just depends on like what you're selling and 
I, I know it can seem like I really try really hard on Etsy. It can be so competitive sometimes, but I try not to play the race to the bottom game, meaning I try not to, I don't look at what my competition is doing or charging much at all. Like I really try to focus on coming up with my own unique and creative items that I feel like will resonate with um, people. Sorry, I just had a weird pop-up pop up on my screen. Hopefully we're still okay and recording and everything. Um, and that way I can charge whatever I feel like in my heart is the right thing to do for my items. Because sometimes like if I'm looking and someone's selling something similar to me and they're selling it for like $5 less, I'm so, it's so tempting to be like, oh shoot, I got to drop my price. I got, but then again, it's just what I call a race to the bottom and nobody wins in that game because we all like there's cost associated with running a business and you just, you've got to just believe in your products and what you're doing and trust that that's going to resonate with your buyers, they're going to love your creative special piece that you're putting into your business. Cause there's, there's a price point, there's buyers at every price point. You will always have buyers that like the cheapest bargain price possible. And you will always have buyers that want the luxury best of the best price possible and are willing to pay for that. So you get to choose on that spectrum, you know, kind of like, where does your business want to fall? So to speak. All right. Do you know if Etsy pick, uh, Etsy picks expire? Haga says, do you know if ETS pick expire? Oh, see, these are coming in. Oh, I should have, you know what? These are coming in more live. Shoot, maybe I will come back here. I'm, I'll come back to you. See, Aga, if you can, um, I think you're asking if the pictures expire. Let me know, Aga, if you're still here and you can elaborate on that a little bit more. But I'm going to go back to the top and start at the top and go down. I think I reversed it again. All right. I am a fairly new shop and I want to be found during the holiday season. Are there any tips you have to getting found on Etsy? Any SEO tips, especially? Yes. So new shops, I know I feel your pain. It is really hard to feel like you're gaining those tra that traction. So I would try try to see if you can get Etsy ads to work for your shop. The next biggest thing is like photos and videos are like super important. Also, what can really help as a new shop instead of going wide, go deep, meaning like, let's say I'm trying to think again, I should have like more industries kind of like, let's go with women's tops again. Okay. Let's say you're a maker and you love to sew and you're like, I'm just going to sew clothes for my shop and make beautiful clothes. I'll even heck I'll do women's clothes. When you're starting out on Etsy, sometimes it can be more beneficial instead of just making women's dresses and shirts and pants and hoping that something will stick. So to think, so to speak is to pick like a category and start there and put like let's say you just are like, I'm just doing women's pants, but not only that, I'm just doing velvet pants. They seem to be really popular right now. A lot of people are liking them. I'm going to make like 20 different types of velvet pants. This is maybe a really bad example, but that helps you to kind of establish yourself on Etsy. And then it's like, once you can kind of like master a little corner of the Etsy universe, it's like you can keep expanding to broader and broader stuff. Um, that's sometimes pieces of advice I'll give when you're first starting out on Etsy, instead of go wide, go deep, pick like a section of the pie that you want to like master and get, like be the best at. I've got the best quality, great pricing, beautiful photos. This is what I do and I'm known for. And then you can sometimes kind of like expand out that way. I also, please feel free, go to my YouTube channel. I have another YouTube video where I talk about like my top five tips for starting an Etsy shop, like the five things I would focus on. And so that's some of the stuff that I put in that video as well. Cause I know it's hard when you're starting out, but do not give up. If you are here in this training, if you are still with me, we've still got 87 people hanging out here tonight, giving up their Tuesday night. It is Tuesday, right? <laughs> to learn about how to grow your Etsy businesses. Like I am telling you guys, that is exactly the kind of Etsy seller I was 12 years ago. I could not stop learning. I read, we didn't even have like YouTube. I don't even know if it was a real thing. There was like hardly anyone. There was like one girl making like Etsy videos back when I started. And I watched like every single one of them. Now you can go to YouTube and like everyone's an Etsy expert. There's, there's some of them are great. Don't get me wrong. Most of them are great, um, but there's so much good information. And the fact that you're here with me tonight, like means that you're serious about your shop, you're showing up, you're learning, you're implementing. You guys are already 10 steps ahead. You're doing phenomenal. So keep it up. Don't be too hard on yourselves when you're starting out. Just keep swimming. 
All right, let's see, Aga here. Do you think it's a good idea to have a separate section for Christmas? Oh, that's a great question. I don't feel like that for my, what I'm doing with the jewelry supplies and the handmade jewelry. I don't have enough, I feel like, Christmas themed items to do that. I do have an ornament section, but that's kind of up year round. Um, so I think that's a great point though. Like if you think that would work for your Chris, like your shop, let's, for example, I'll go with the wreaths. I feel like that would be a really good one that that would work for. I, for sure. Like if I was shopping for wreaths, I would love for that wreath shop to have like a holiday wreath collection where I could go and look at specific holiday wreaths. So I think it really just depends on what you're selling. But yeah, I think that could be a really fun option to do for holidays. I know in the past, I've even tried to do like a section, like gifts under 30, I haven't seen as much success with that, but I know some sellers do it and I think do really well with it. So that might be something worth playing around with, but great questions. Love the question guys. Okay. Do you think Etsy ads work for larger price ticket items better than smaller? Yeah. I kind of touched on that a little bit. I do definitely think it can be easier with higher priced items, but play around with it and see if you have lower price items, it could still work for me. It hasn't, but I do know there are other supply shops that I see are running ads. So it must be working for them. So I think it just totally depends on, you know, what works and playing around and kind of like trial and error with Etsy a lot of the time. All right. Jennifer says, should you use your maximum daily budget for Etsy ads? Maximum bit. So this is an interesting thing. So the way Etsy ads works is you set your maximum daily budget, but Etsy may not use it. Like it's the weirdest thing. I wish no one's been able to exactly tell me what that is about. I think it's just like how many items you're actually advertising and how busy Etsy itself is, if that makes sense. excuse me. So with the Etsy ads, it's like, you'll set your budget and you'll say, Hey, Etsy, the max I want to spend is $10. Etsy may not spend that. I don't get to choose. Like, I think I have one of my jewelry shop right now has a max budget and Etsy's not spending, like they're barely spending half of what I've told them. Like, Hey, I'm happy to spend this much. But I think, again, I've just shut off so many ads that I didn't feel like we're performing. So when you set your max daily budget, you, that's just, you're just telling Etsy, you are not allowed to spend more than this. So it's kind of like a fail safe, like, so Etsy doesn't spend a hundred dollars and you're like, what happened? <laughs> so you tell Etsy definitely don't spend more than this. But if you set a, let's say a max daily budget of $10, Etsy may not use that every day at the holidays. You will find that that budget will go up because there's so many more people coming that Etsy is able to show a lot more ads, if that makes sense. So hopefully that answered that question, Jennifer, let me know if I didn't quite get it, or if you have any, you know, you want clarification on Etsy ads a little bit more. All right. Do you turn them off so that your ad money goes to performing items? Yes, that's exactly it. Um, Jonna, hope I say these names right. So when you were looking at your Etsy ads, when we were kind of going through that section and I said, I turn off the ads that I feel like aren't performing. Yeah. It's one of two things. One, cause I want Etsy then to put that money towards the ads that do seem to be working a lot better. And two, I just don't want to waste money on ads that aren't working for whatever reason. Like I have some top selling items in my shop that are, they're like my top selling items. And if I try to advertise those, I cannot get a return, like meaning, so for every dollar I'm spending, I'm making like a dollar fifty. And I'm like, for me and my margins, that doesn't make sense to pay to advertise that item. So I turn those off and they're still like some of my top selling items, but they do terrible with ads for some reason. So I don't know. Again, I am definitely not an Etsy ads expert. Not sure why that is, but it is, you know, an interesting thing to think about. But yeah, that's why I like to turn them off so my money can go to better places. All right, Diane says, if you advertise all of your listings, does this reduce the number of times each product is advertised? How many ads are run daily for $5 versus $2? Uh, now this one, I'm not, I wish I had more information. I wanna say, I think it depends on each item. I know that for sure, but I found again for my jewelry shop that it fluctuates. I wanna say per click. Oh, I'm trying to remember. I wanna say I'm paying on average about 20 cents a click. That doesn't mean that's like some keywords are maybe going to be more competitive and you're going to pay like a higher price. I don't know how Etsy figures it out with all their algorithm stuff. But yes, what to, to the, your first question here, if you advertise, does this reduce the number of times 
each product is advertised if you advertise all of them. So yes, so it is an interesting thing. And again, sometimes I don't know how Etsy picks it because I will have like lots of ads turned on and there is still some items that for some reason, I can't figure out why Etsy is not showing to people. Like the ad is turned on, but it's like views, 10 like it showed it to like 10 people and i'm like why is etsy not showing this item to more people i don't understand so i wish i had a better answer for you hopefully that 20 cents ish per click is accurate um don't hold me to that please feel free someone maybe if you're still in the comments if someone has some more accurate about on average how much you're spending per click well i mean not you but how much etsy's charging you per click that your shop is making um, go ahead, feel free to chime in there. So let me know, Diane, again, if you have any other questions on that. All right, I do jewelry as well, which is better for the holiday season, made to order or ready to ship. Um, I, for the holidays, it's definitely ready to ship. Uh, people love that stuff as fast as possible. So Erica, if that makes sense for your jewelry shop, if you can offer that, I would try as hard as you can. Maybe you just, I don't know, again, depending on the volume, depending on how many items you have, if you could have those items ready to ship, that can definitely make a difference. We have two categories in my jewelry shop. When I set up my shipping profiles, it's like I have one batch of items that is called ready to ship. And those are items that we can ship like the day we receive them. It's just this piece and this piece coming together. We can whip that out. Another section of my items takes one to three business days. It's just the process it takes us to make it. We've got to mix stuff and dry stuff and connect stuff. I can't speed that up unless it's a pre-made item and I've already done that. And then we can ship it out in the one to two business days. So ready to ship if you can, I would always recommend, especially for something like jewelry. For us, I wish I could do that for every item. It's not possible, but we try to do it for many items as we can. All right. Would you recommend using social media ads to drive sales instead of Etsy's? Great question, Lena. Um, I don't do a whole lot with social media, especially ads, only because uh, I'm really frustrated. I wish Etsy let us track what I call conversion on outside ads. So Etsy tells us our conversion for their ads. And that's why I use Etsy ads, because I can see, hey, I spent a dollar. I made $3, I'll keep running that ad. Or, hey, I spent a dollar and only made 50 cents. I lost money, I'm shutting that ad off. For social media, if you do any kind of social media ad, Facebook ad, Instagram ad, Pinterest ad, does TikTok do ads now? Probably. <laughs> if you do any of those kind of ads, Etsy will not tell you. You don't have any way to know if that ad actually made money. So. That being said, we have the one platform that I think I have seen some pretty good success and we're going to play around with this year is Pinterest. So Pinterest, it will say like, hey, Pinterest sent you a thousand visitors today. And I'm like, oh, cool. That's from that ad that we showed. I'm not 100 percent sure how many people bought off of those people that came, but I can sometimes do a rough guesstimate. I can look at my order history, look at the specific item that we were advertising, try to get a, a good idea on if that ad is working. So overall, I recommend Etsy ads. But that being said, we are going to try to play around with Pinterest ads. And maybe again, depending on what social media channel you're on, maybe it would be TikTok if they have ads. I'm not 100 percent sure. Instagram, like if you're really good and have a great following on Instagram, like, yeah, I would absolutely try some Instagram ads and see if you can get a feel for that a little bit. All right. Are you doing the 20 percent Etsy early sale? Yes, I am. I know not all sellers. It doesn't work for every shop. I actually I'm not 100 percent sure. I don't think we're actually doing it for the supply shop because, again, those prices are a little bit lower. I should double check on that. I can't remember. I know for sure my jewelry shop, we are definitely doing it. I love to participate in Etsy sales that they're doing just so, again, I can get my shop in front of as many eyeballs as possible, whether that's on their website and their emails or what have you. I like to participate. And I think if you can, it's something that I would say is worth trying for sure. All right. Is it a good idea to have specific holiday branding sale? Yeah, so to, I think what you're asking is to have a specific holiday branding sale. So kind of like have a sale that's branded holiday, kind of like cyber, whatever. 
um, you know, all of that stuff. Yeah, we love to put that stuff. We put it in our banner. We put it in our shop announcements. I mean, I, when I'm shopping on Etsy during the holidays, I always appreciate a sale that whatever shop. The one thing I will say this, that when it comes to sales and my advice on sales, don't make them gimmicky. Don't just do like raise your prices 20% and then run a sale for 20%. Like I, if you're going to run sales, put that in your pricing. So it's not changing all the time. Like set the price of your item so you can afford to do that. And then I change my sales. I like to change my sales every month. Sometimes it's anywhere from 10%, sometimes it's 30%. Um, but again, that's just so far the strategy I'd like to use specifically for Etsy. I get that it's not for everyone. Don't think just because I'm here, like it's gonna work for you or not work for you. Like, you know your shop better than anyone else. So um, for me though, I do like to run the holiday sales for sure. All right, do you have any specific recommendations for higher price items to boost sales during the holiday? Ellie, I would really focus, again, I think I said this, like the photos, the videos, I'm trying to think specifically like for higher price items, definitely the Etsy ads, what is something else? I think just really making sure you have all of those photos. Again, please go back to my YouTube channel, watch that photo, um, top photography tips. It talks about like lifestyle photos. There's like seven different types of photos you want to have included in your listing, but especially for higher price items, like you've got to communicate that value for sure. Make sure people understand and can see and recognize why would I want this item? Like, how does this fit in my life? A lot of that is done through photos descriptions, customer service. It's like all of these pieces are really important. It's always like a big puzzle piece. And it's like, you got to make sure you're doing really good customer service, taking care of your customers, getting those good reviews. Although I know it can be as frustrating as heck, but really I try, I bend over backwards for my customers, even though they are so mean and so wrong sometimes, only sometimes most of my customers are beyond incredible, but sometimes I do get those and I'm like, oh, this is so hard, but I just like kill them with kindness. Um, because one, you never know what's going on in people's lives. And I just like to give people the benefit of the doubt, but I really do think in business, it does translate well into just reviews and a positive overall shop feel and experience for your customers. All right, I find it difficult to incentivize shoppers with the 10 to 15% as I have lower cost items, hard to make a decent incentive while still trying to, I think I talked about, I think I did this one a little bit earlier, Ella, but yeah, I totally get that. The, the pricing with, when you have lower price items, it can be hard. So it's just got to focus on like fast shipping, customer service, um, you know, maybe doing like some special incentives, like with their purchase, like special notes, just something to kind of like give your shop that little special touch, um, especially, especially during the holidays. All right. Do you know if, okay, this is the question that Aga was asking earlier. I'm not sure if I answered that. I'm going to keep going and see if she clarified a little more here. I couldn't agree more. I barely look at my competition. Yes. That's from Terry. Sorry. Etsy picks. Okay. Oh, shoot. I guess. So you were saying if your Etsy picks expire, what do you mean by Etsy picks? Is that like, you mean when people are like favoriting items, like they're picking, or are you talking about Etsy picks? I'm trying to think, I'm so sorry. I'm missing what you're meaning by Etsy picks. I'm trying to think Etsy picks. Oh, 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 I think I got it. I'm so sorry. Etsy picks are the items that Etsy has promoted in an email. I have seen though. Did you know, I don't even actually know. I don't think my I don't think I've had any items that have been Etsy picks as much as I love Etsy and Etsy loves me. It's, <laughs> it's great. It's all good. Um, yeah. I don't know about that. That's a really good question. So she's asking, you know how you're like browsing and sometimes you'll see items and it says Etsy pick under it. I'm pretty sure they get that badge from being featured in like an email or something. Um, I don't know if those expire. I don't, my guess would be they don't, but that is a really good question. And I'm not hundred percent sure. My guess would be no, that you would get to keep that for as long as that item is alive and active, but that's a great question. Yes, I would love to, like, I'm sure everyone would love to have a little Etsy picks badge. Thank you for clarifying. All right, I sell art prints and greeting cards and I do have a winter Christmas section as well as a fall Halloween section. Excellent. Yes, I think especially something for like prints, greeting cards, that definitely makes sense. So thanks for sharing those examples in your shop there, Jennifer. All right, let's see. How long do you give ads to perform for an item before shutting them off? Oh yeah, great question, Terry. So for me personally, well, sometimes it's painful, but honestly, <laughs> truth be told, I would have told you to start running your ads all of October 
and then tweak them in November. <laughs> but now, so it's like, we're a little late to that game. I, it really depends for me. I like to let, I set a daily budget of whatever that is, be that $5, $10, and let that just kind of run for at least a couple of weeks. Then once my ads have been going for at least a couple of weeks, I almost want to say, try to let them go for a month before you kind of like mess with them too much. I know that can get expensive though. And again, we're kind of already in the holiday-ish season. But once I do that, then it's just a matter what I actually do is I sort the items by how much budget I spend. So I see all of those higher items first, and then I just go through that list. And if it's not meeting for me, I like, like I said, I like to have at least, I've actually dropped it down to 2.5, I think. So if it doesn't have a 2.5 or higher ROAS, I shut it off. Um, and then I will every week I'll go in and I'll look at my stats for the orders and I'll look at my top selling orders and I will see which ones have the best, best conversion rate. Meaning like if an item had 20 sales and it had a hundred visitors and another item had a hundred visitors, but it had 40 sales. That is an item that I will turn the ads on again, just to see, because that conversion is so good that see if those ads can't help it. I hope that's making sense. And I'm not just speaking gibberish to you. So let me know if you need more clarification, but that's a really good question, Terry. So for me, it's like a, as soon as they run for a couple of weeks, then I start looking at that ROAS. Oh, here's something else though. I also don't shut my ads off until they hit a certain point. So for me and my jewelry, for whatever reason in my mind, I've decided that's like, I think I set it at $4, depending on the time of season. As we get closer to the holidays, I think I bump it down to like three or two or something. Right now, I think it's at $4. So if I have an item in my shop and Etsy has not yet spent in the last 30 days, at least $4 on that item, I will just let it run, even if it's had a zero ROAS, because I want to give it a chance to see if it can perform. So for again, for other shops, maybe that's less, maybe that's more. I'm not sure. I just know for me, that's kind of like my thing is if it has spent more than $4, then I look at the ROAS. But if it hasn't spent at least $4, I just leave those items alone until they start actually, you know, Etsy starts showing them a little more and I can gather a little more data to see if they're performing or not. All right. I do hand woven wall hangings. Do you think it's better to create Christmas gift section or keep it under home decor? Ooh, I would say here's this Aga. So I recommend, I also do like Etsy one-on-one -on -one Etsy coaching with people. And I have told people before, when you're looking at your sections, I really recommend only putting together a section if you can put at least 10 items in there. So if you've got at least 10 Christmas wall hangings, go ahead and maybe put them in their own section. But if you don't, I would just keep them in the home decor section. Or maybe, I don't know, again, for your shop, Aga, maybe you could have a, um, like a Christmas section. What, oh, wait, wait, I think I got it now. You do hand woven wall hangings, Christmas section, or keep it under the home decor section. Yeah, so I think it what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say is if you can have at least 10 of them, you can maybe do that. If not, maybe you just keep them in the home decor section. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I love answering your questions. All right, we're almost down to the last here. For the first and second years of a new shop, what are the top three tips you use and seen the most number of sales? Shop performance took off. I think for me, it really especially again with a new shop, it came down to like one of my biggest success points on Etsy has been keywords. So again, I will drop some of those keyword tools, but I use, and I need to make a YouTube video showing people how this, how I do this, but I use these keyword tools to find keywords in my industry that sellers are searching for that not as many sellers are selling. And there's quite a few out there. I have like some favorites, some that I like, a little more than others, but honestly, I use like two or three of them all kind of interchange. And I will try really hard. I have some, one of my best friends is trying to open an Etsy shop right now. And I've been telling her, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm going to try to make a YouTube video for you showing you how to do this. I just have not made the time yet, especially now that we're getting into the holidays, but that's a great question, Lena. I really, for me, just for my shop, I leaned really heavy into SEO and just looking for items that were more popular that didn't have a ton of competition. And that's kind of like what I've done with my shops on Etsy. 
Um, still though, please feel free. I do have other videos that talk a little more in depth about some of those topics. All right, thank you so much for your tips. You are so welcome, makes sense, hooray. And would you recommend using an SEL tool to find good keywords for your shop, Isabella? Yes, absolutely. Please, when this is done, I should have this video posted in the next day or two. Um, go ahead and check out my Cat Hutchings YouTube channel, and I will put those links in there for you guys. I don't want to go, oh, we didn't do too bad. Actually, oh, no, we are. We're over. We're like, we've been going for an hour now. So let me come back here to the chat. Um, I have my limit. You guys have been talking about ads, it looks like. Do you do wholesale shop 20% off of some items? I like the way your banner and announcement looks. Thank you, Chana. Do you do do you do the whole shop 20% off? Yes. So for me personally, for whatever reason, I've always liked to do my whole shop on sale. I've never even tried to do it any other way. It doesn't mean it's not a good idea. It's just what I found works for my shop for sure. Um, Isabella, you are so welcome. Um, I'm just, I hope I didn't miss anyone here. I'm trying to look over the chat a little bit. Uh, I use print and mint and you're talking about print on demand there. Love to hear what Kat has to say using Printify. I'm not as good with print on demand. Guys, I'm in, like, I'm a dinosaur Etsy. Like print on demand was not even an option when I started selling on Etsy. So I think it's an awesome business. I love it. I get a little bit lost in the tech, the SEO, the photos. I get all of that. I can help with that. But <laughs> the actual connecting your shop to these different printy shop things, I'm definitely not as good at. Okay, so thank you guys so much. Um, again, I will be posting this replay. Let me check really quick if anyone else has any other questions. I think we did that one and then back here to the chat. Okay, so I'm gonna shut us off for now. Thank you guys again. It has been my absolute pleasure. If you have any other questions, the best way to reach me, honestly, on my YouTube channel, you can type in those comments, any other questions you have. I'm going to try really hard to keep making those videos for you guys. I really think it's valuable to just have a little more seasoned Etsy seller being able to share their actual real life world experience with you guys, as well as someone that's still running an Etsy shop, which I totally know why I know a lot of the Etsy coaches out there are not currently running Etsy shops, which now I understand now that I've started trying to do a little more of the coaching. It's really, really hard to balance running a full-time Etsy shop with trying to help other Etsy sellers run their shops, but it's something I absolutely love. And I really want to encourage sellers because it has changed my life. I love Etsy. Also friendly reminder, please remember to try to shop on Etsy as much as you can this holiday note to myself as well. Like I really feel like our dollars go a lot further helping small businesses than the big box stores. Don't get me wrong. I still shop from them sometimes. Please, please don't unsubscribe and hate me and never come back to my tradings. But I do think it is so special if we can all as sellers try to make the exerted effort to buy from other Etsy shops along our holiday shopping journey. It can make a big difference in, in our sales as well. And it's always good juju and karma. So thank you guys. You've got notes. Thank you for the information. Love your shop. I'm going to go check it out here. Open new tab link. I will check out all of your shops. Thank you guys. Everyone have a wonderful night and we will see you all next time on another Etsy training.